Good morning. Welcome to our adventure in the Icelandic islands. Oh, but this is not Icelandic islands. As you can see, I'm still at home. I'm actually in my living room. And I'm trying my new tent. I have to practice a little bit because I didn't camp since the age of 14. So I will share with you my new camping gear that I will take along with me in the Icelandic islands. First of all, probably the most important item considering camping is a good sleeping bag. This one is a Swing 700 from Valandry. It's a duck down, it's really warm. You can use it until minus 15 degrees, which should be okay for the Icelandic islands in September. Should be okay. And I will put you links from all the items I display today in the description below. Second piece, the pillow. It's an ultra light air pillow from Exped. It's Swiss made, so it's really good stuff. From the same uh, Swiss brand, Exped, a super light mat, ultra light and compact. This is pretty easy to blow up and deflat afterwards. This is really pretty good stuff. Comes with a air pump. Yeah, it's an air pump. So you either blow in it. Uh, well, that, that doesn't work. But with Icelandic wind, it should be pretty easy. Otherwise, you just Okay, here we go. That's our air pump. And you fix that on the, on the mat, and then just pumping, pumping, pumping. And finally, I'm sleeping with uh, Big Agnes. Big Agnes is my tent, actually. And it's a fly creek, which means it's for two people. It's ultra lightweight, perfect for backpacking. I just hope it's not too much ultra light for Icelandic winds. That's we're gonna see it in the future. Stay tuned. Oh, by the way, it's really easy to to set up this tent. I'll show you a quick time lapse. We did it for the first time and it took like not even 10 minutes to, to set it up. So it should not be a problem. Maybe the only problem in location could be the wind. Ready to camp? Layers, 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 layers. It's all about layers. Whatever the season, it's all about layers. You can take the same layers more or less depending winter or summer. First of all, merino wool underwear. From top to the bottom. Socks, pants and top. The second layer is polar on top and hiking pants. The third layer is a warm and breathing soft chair. The fourth layer is a good pair of hiking boots. Hello the cat. Waterproof hiking boots is better. Waterproof pants. Waterproof and windproof jacket. And a wool hat. So if it's cold and freezing and rainy, it just have cover. If the weather changes, like it happens more than often in Iceland, you just have to remove one layer. And that's it. No, I'm not a terrorist, I'm a photographer. Despite this 
pretty bad look. That's a gear that I use on a daily basis on my job as a news photographer, which is really good stuff. When you're getting older and you start to, to get back pain, backpacks, side bags, all this stuff is not really practical. With that, you can put in some cameras, lenses, and all the regular stuff you just need. It's really good for hiking, so you don't have all the weight on your shoulders. Here it's really well balanced. That's a, a good piece of gear. We're gonna talk a little bit later about what's in my photo bag, but let's start with the other gear I take along. First of all, audio. I'm using this microphone to record my voiceover or infield noises like uh, waterfalls or wind and so on. To put on my camera, I use this kind of microphone. For vlogging, I usually use this small, tiny microphone just to hang up there. Most of our video stuff in our, in our episodes are taken with the Osmo Pocket, which is really useful, compact, lightweight. Actually, this comes with a kind of tripod like this. And your phone comes connected on your Osmo. This allows you to, to take uh, time lapses, regular stuff, 4K quality, and very useful as well for vlogging, as you can take the camera just in front of you. It's pretty stable. Good stuff. Next, let's talk about drones. I just bought a new one, which is the Mavic Pro 2. Um, pretty excited to use it during my next trip in uh, Highlands with its controller, batteries. Oh, by the way, this is uh, a useful item when you travel with your drone batteries, um, you have to bring your batteries inside the cabin of the plane and to keep it safe, uh, there are those very practical bags which should protect uh, from burning or small explosions of the batteries. And finally, the bag to transport your, your drone and all the gear who comes with it. I will put a link uh, below uh, in detail about each item. Let's quickly talk about storage. Uh, on location, uh, I use these hard drives, uh, two terabytes to save as much as I can, usually every day, uh, to get a copy of all my files. When you are in the wilderness, you, you don't have always access to electricity. So I have a useful power unit, which allows me to put uh, four different USB uh, cables on it. Um, this one from Zenmuse is a pretty good one as you can charge, fully charge, 8 to 10 times your smartphone. Or then when we come to camp place, uh, we plug 
this one to the electricity overnight and the next morning it's already fully charged again. Another useful item is this uh, power converter for the car uh, that you just can plug. It's a 12 volt to 200 or 300. Uh, this one is useful for all the items that don't can be charged via a USB cable. So you have to plug it directly uh, on this one. Which means in at the end you are in the remote high, highlands without uh, without electricity, without uh, network connection, and you are still able to do your job, to charge your batteries, phone charged as well, even if you don't have network. A lot of applications, uh, GPS applications, map applications run without uh, network connection, so it's uh, very useful. And your smartphone, um, you need it for the Osmo and for the drone as well. So you need to have it always fully charged. That's it. Now we jump to the photo gear and see you then. So first of all, my bag, which is a love throw. Uh, I use it to carry it on the plane. It fits in the luggage compartment. It's a pretty solid half cover and waterproof as well. So let's see what's inside my bag. I actually use Nikon. I'm using mostly my D5, which is a very solid camera. It's high level quality, water seal and I use it mostly for sport photography, which is uh, it is very fast. Uh, autofocus is very fast. It's a bit heavy. It's not ideal for hiking and exploring in nature, but these are my professional gear, so I take it with me. My second, my second body is uh, a new mirrorless uh, Z6. Um, I just started to use it and I have to say that I'm pretty happy with that gear because it's the opposite. Uh, it's lightweight, uh, still very good image uh, quality. Um, it comes with a 24 to 70 and I have a second lens which goes with this and it's a uh, 14 to 30 at f.4. These two lenses are, are pretty awesome and if I could on a daily basis uh, I would just work with this body and these two lenses. But we need some tele lens. For this I have the 70 to 200 f 2.8 a wide angle 16 to 35 F4, uh, 50 mm at F1.4, which is perfect for portrait shots, to have a nice bokeh in the background, or for night photography. And uh, 20 mm at F1.8, which is really a great lens uh, for night photography, astrophotography, and for the next trip in Iceland, uh, it should help me a lot to capture northern lights. What comes with this gear is some random stuff, shutter release for long exposures, and let's talk about filters. Filters, I use a polarizer, high quality, German quality, Schneider, I think it is. 10 stop neutral density filter for very long exposures. And then I have a kit with a 
leaf filter system, which is really practical stuff that just fix it in front of your lens and you can slide different filters in it. And here I have a grad filter, which is a three stop soft grad, which is darker at the top. It's perfect for landscape when you have a seascape or horizontal, it's a pretty good stuff. This is a six stopper which allows me to shoot uh, long exposures. I mostly use it for waterfalls or to smooth uh, the waves or the clouds in the sky. Some cloth to clean the, the lenses. And we have some spare batteries. I also bring some different tripods. This one, a very low and small pocket tripod, which can be useful. And I have two other travel tripods. I'm not really happy with those because, okay, they are lightweight, and uh, small size so you can put it in your luggage but for high winds or or rough or standing in the sea or with the waves hitting the the legs of the tripod it's not very sturdy but it's okay for traveling and uh, hiking because it's lightweight and compact and that's pretty much what i carry with me for my next trip to iceland um, I won't use and carry all the lenses all the time. I will leave uh, most of them in the back and just carry with me just what I need. That's very important. If you are young, you don't, you don't care, but you will see that when getting older, uh, you will have to, to leave some weight in the trunk of your, in the trunk of your car or in, in the bags. I will put the links of my gear in the description below um, and that's it so feel free to comment ask questions if you have and see you in the highlands